Paranormal King Radio Network. Bringing you the best paranormal hosts and guests. Bringing you the best paranormal shows and features. Playing the top musical artists from around the world. Paranormal King Radio Network. with the best paranormal hosts and guests. The best in paranormal shows and features. Playing the best musical artists from around the world. Paranormal King Radio Network. The paranormal will never be the same. You are listening to Paranormalities and Ponderings with the Casper Paranormal Team. Brought to you by the Paranormal King Radio Network and hosted by Frank Lee. Join us for the next hour as we discuss ghosts, spirits, hauntings, and other worldly phenomena that has yet to be explained in hopes of finding answers. This show is meant to be a resource for those of you who, like us, seek to find answers to the unknown. We hope you find it informative. Once again, thank you for listening. Welcome to Paranormalities and Ponderings with the Casper Paranormal Team. I'm your host, Frank Lee. Tonight we've got a special show for you. You've heard some of the guests we've had, and you've heard me a bunch of times. I've done quite a bit of talking. You have got to meet Donald Davis, our operations manager and lead investigator. So now it's time for you to get to meet the rest of the team. So we have them in on the show tonight. So everybody at once, let me hear you say hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the whole team here. We've got Donald, Pink, D, Christine, Courtney, Brittany, and our unnamed newest team member, which I will be introducing to the world later in the show. So I'm um, going to start off with Donald tonight. How are you doing tonight, Donald? Doing pretty good, Frank. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm glad to have everyone here. This should be an interesting show. I, I was yeah, thinking. most most definitely got the whole team on. We can uh, we can sit here and introduce ourselves to to the people that follow us and the fans. Right, and well, you know, I was thinking that this could get very interesting very quickly, especially when you put this bunch together. No kidding, and some people might go home in trouble tonight. Who knows? <laughs> right, <laughs> and and of course um, now. You know, we've also mentioned Jennifer. Of course, she couldn't make it to the show tonight, but, you know, that doesn't mean we won't tell a few stories about her. Right, yeah. Always <laughs> better to, to talk about them while they're not with us. <laughs> right. So, so we uh, might get in trouble with that later, but, you know, <laughs> right now. <laughs> right. Y'all, y'all have to go home. <laughs> See, I don't. <laughs> right. So... But anyway, well, Donald, well, tell us a little bit about yourself. What what was the first thing that really sparked your interest in the paranormal? Well, I guess the, the very first thing was, uh, I would have to say I was about 11 or 12 years old. And I was living down in Florida. I'm originally from Florida. Uh, stayed down there until about 2005 when I moved up here. 
But uh, anyway, I was uh, my aunt Joyce had uh, she lived in a house, and there's always a weird feeling in that house. Right. Well, there was uh, I was I went inside one day by myself, and went to use the restroom, come out. And the door, you know how the carpet will raise up, and the door is really hard to close. Right. Well, I didn't, I didn't pull the door to behind me, but I was standing there looking for a rag to dry my hands, and all of a sudden that door just slammed too. And I mean, you really had to put some force behind this door. Oh wow! In order to close it, and it literally scared me to death. I mean, at 12 years old, you went running out of the house. You know what I mean? And so that kind of that kind of peaked it. That kind of started it right there. But, absolutely. You know, what was it? Some of that good thick shag carpet that was almost impossible. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was back in the '60s and '70s carpet. You know what I mean? So it was right. like worked, real thick stuff. Worked more like a door wedge than an actual floor cover. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it sure did. You couldn't hardly ever get that door closed. But uh, that was uh, that was what kind of uh, got me thinking about, you know, the paranormal. And it wasn't until, you know, just four or five years ago when I actually got into investigating and researching the paranormal. It was actually when I moved up here to Pale City back in 2005. So, you know, once you move to a new town, you go to talking to new people and, uh, you know, from time to time, uh, you, someone will mention a ghost story, and then there you are the next two hours talking about everybody's ghost stories. So, absolutely, that you know, that seems to happen to us quite a bit, especially if we does. go to the store, you know, or anywhere. Yeah, you go to, you go to Walmart to go get, uh, who knows, uh, you know, a pack of pork chops, and then you meet a friend in there, and all of a sudden you're in there for an hour and a half talking about what's happening over at his house. You know what I mean? So, Absolutely. But uh, anyway, once I moved up here to uh, Pale City and got to know a bunch of people and just listening to the the stories of Pale City itself, you know, uh, several, several, several sites of activity and uh so that that got me more interested in it and you know about that time also was when you know all these uh ghost adventures paranormal shows were coming out and uh and that really really uh sparked my interest on how the actual investigations go so for about two and a half three years there i researched and i studied on investigations and equipment and different types of entities, you know, just whatever you can run into out there. I wanted to be prepared before I actually went out into the field. Absolutely. And, and uh, so I decided, well, I think I'm ready, and uh, I think I'll start my own team. So me, my wife Jennifer, and my niece Pink, we started our own team. Mm -hmm. And so we went on our first investigation right here in Pale City. And uh, within 30 minutes of when we started the investigation, we got our first EVP. So you can imagine the excitement that came over us, our very first investigation, and we get an EVP immediately, pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, I can relate. So, so you know that just really lit a fire under us and, and, and the passion and, and just the science behind it all. So, and that's... That's uh, that was before that uh, we ran into y'all. We uh, we met up with you. Uh, I guess it was about three or four months later, and uh, you invited us on an investigation, and so we 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 went with y'all and done the investigation, and we worked great together. Uh, we shared the same passion for the science behind it and uh, clientele as well. Uh, helping them with any problems that they have and we decided to uh, join forces and here we are today right that's that a lot of people don't know that we actually ended up putting two teams together when we formed um, when we formed Casper and right yeah sure did and so that was kind of interesting. That that was how we acquired Pink and a couple of our other members. And yeah. And speaking of Pink, I know she's hiding back there somewhere. <laughs> <All> uh, <right>. <laughs> 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 uh, 
but let, let's get her up here closer to the mic there that, how, how are you tonight pink i'm doing wonderful how are you i'm doing great and and for the record i'm the only paranormal radio show that i can say has had pink floyd on the radio <laughs> <laughs> live that is that's we're right. just gaining fans left and right now aren't we? <laughs> Ab- absolutely this week pink floyd next week Le- lloyd arback <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Pink, she is she she does a lot of counseling with us as team members as well as clients. She's one of our mediums. She's one of our investigators. Very knowledgeable. Can't brag on her enough. Very creative. Just you know, does a lot of great things for the team. And so, Bink, what what got you interested in all of this? Well, honestly, when I was about, I would guess, five or six years old, I had what my family considered an imaginary friend. Of course, I knew he was not imaginary. Mm-hmm. He was there. I talked to him. He lived in the little, I guess, outbuilding shed thing behind my house and I talked to him and he would sit in my room with me and at the time I didn't even really realize that I was I guess talking to a ghost I just knew that apparently everyone could not see him and I could you know and how many times would you say we've ran into a similar situation on a case where the child has an imaginary friend that it happens very very often people should really consider that the children and animals they always know always always know pay attention to what your kids and animals see even if you don't see it mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely so well when um well when you're talking about this imaginary friend and all of this came about well how, how did it go from there well uh, immediately uh, my family decided I needed to see a shrink <laughs> so, <laughs> so I learned very quickly obviously don't talk about th- what I saw that they didn't see to them and so I didn't talk about it for a very 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 long time It wasn't until I was in my probably late teens that I really started talking to people about it. Just because, obviously, when I was a child, it left that impression that, well, obviously people think I'm crazy. Right. Even though I knew different. Right. I I can imagine so. And I I can imagine that's something that probably happens rather often is these children come forward with what they are really seeing. And it gets misinterpreted as perhaps a psychological disorder. And so when it when that happens, they bottle it up. They shut it up and they don't open up about it anymore. And it's very unfortunate that that happens. And I'm sure it happens more times than not. You would have to have some pretty open-minded parents to really accept. And, you know, as adults, you tend to get more... Uh, cynical, you know, and think, oh, that's not real. You know, at first they're like, oh, it's cute. She has an imaginary friend or, you know, and then the more they realize, oh, she's playing too much with this imaginary friend. Oh, we need to get her some help. Right. Well, well, you know, also back, you know, back 15, 15, 20 years ago when we were younger, uh, you know, people didn't talk about the paranormal like they do today. You know, it's it's a lot more. Uh, the paranormal is is out there a lot more than what it used to be. So I think we have a lot more open-minded people to the paranormal than we did when they thought we were crazy back when we were younger. Absolutely, which is nice. I mean, it's good that it's been brought to the public that hey, people really right. can see exactly these yeah. things and you know acknowledge that there's they're there even if you can't see them or talk to them. There are people who can feel it, you know, and right. 
I think it's it's great that it's been brought to awareness so that parents don't immediately jump to the conclusion, oh, my kid's crazy. Right. right. I, I think that's one of the big advantages to having on the paranormal TV shows that we have now and a lot of that because I know when I first started investigating, there was... Oh, the only show that was on the air back then was that Scariest Places on Earth. And it wasn't really taken very seriously. And, right. And there was so much of a stigma attached to it. And the resources weren't there. The, you know, it, it was just such a completely different world than it is now. So it, you're, you're absolutely right. It's now it's more mainstream. It's more widely accepted. And to an investigator or to a client, they have so much more available to them to help them. Well, with the internet, that's always helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, the, you can Google anything nowadays. So yeah. it's, uh, Google knows everything. Right. I, I wish I'd had that when I first started. I, I'm i about to tell a little bit about my age here, but not long after I first started, it was AOL chat rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those, yes. <laughs> the dial-up, the 15-minute long dial tone you get. Oh. <laughs> right. Right, and and there's there's some people listening right now that are wondering what we're talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I mean, they'll never have to experience the 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 first internet we had. <laughs> That's. I think they should make people listen to that sound anyway. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think they should. Everybody needs to start off with that just to get a little taste of it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, I, I think they should at least have to experience going through doing an investigation, spending several hours out. You know, you've been there all night. You've taken all these pictures, and you've got to wait three days for your pictures to get developed before you get to see oh, what you got. <laughs> I, I think that's something that every investigator should have to experience just so they appreciate what they have now. No kidding, yeah. <laughs> now it's, you know, couldn't download pictures back then. It was take them to the Walmart for the photo lab there. Right. But you know, the 35 millimeter cameras, they the, they were used quite a bit back uh, during investigations back then. So I bet you the photo labs made a ton of money off of uh, paranormal investigators. <laughs> oh, oh, they did? Because... Honestly, back in those days, digital cameras were, it, it was said that they would never be accepted into mainstream paranormal investigation. They just weren't taken seriously. Right. So, that being the case, it, um, you know, it was quite a while before they were, you know, before they really caught on because the digital cameras were when you really started seeing more orbs being captured in pictures and right, things like yeah. that and that was when that debate really got hot and oh yeah and so you know I gotta remember when Polaroids were one of the were, were still considered an effective tool for <laughs> investigation yeah. and yeah you know yeah, it's, it's uh, it's changed so much. I I remember filters on, you know, on, on the headphones so that you could equalize it down to take out the tape hiss when you were listening for EVPs. And, I mean, yeah. a, a lot of your newer teams, when they, the technology they have now, don't realize how fortunate they really are. No kidding. Yeah, I mean, everything's digital and everything's a lot easier to, to use now. And, and also a lot easier to use. so you, you really have to watch out for that as well so that um and now we've also got someone that helps pink out quite a bit typically their partners in crime and that's d so so d are you back there close to the microphone i am well how are you tonight d I'm groovy. How are you? Uh, doing great. Doing great. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. What what got you interested in the paranormal? Well, uh, 
let's see, I was probably about four, and Mommy Mall was really into scaring all of her grandchildren before going to bed. So she enjoyed telling ghost stories. And one night, as I was getting ready to go to sleep, she was telling me one of her famous scary stories. And, uh, like, right at the dun-dun-dun moment, Mm -hmm. uh, we heard somebody come in through the back door. And we watched this person in the dark walk up the hallway and turn and go into the bathroom. And they shut the door. Well, the light never came on. So she thought that maybe it was my Aunt Donna Jean, so she gave it a few minutes, and we waited and we waited, and then the light came on. So we waited some more, and nobody ever came out. So she went in, and nobody was in the bathroom. (laughs) Needless to say, she stopped telling me ghost stories after that. But (laughs) I, uh, I got really into it. I was really scared. Uh, for a long time but things would happen mostly around my mother (laughs) Um, I remember I was standing in her bathroom one night and stuff would uh, fall in her shower and it would scare me to death but I was brushing my teeth and I looked up and her closet door was cracked open and there was a face staring at me. So I ran outside and sat outside until she got off work. Uh, I can imagine that was quite a terrifying moment, to say the yeah, least. Yeah, it was pretty scary. But, um, so, I don't know. So, so after that, what was it that made you decide that in, instead of being terrified and wanting to avoid anything to do with the paranormal, made you want to say, you know what, I want to find out how that works. What made that happen? When, when would you say that kicked in? What caused um, that? Um, I was probably about 12, I guess. I've always been very interested in it, kind of obsessed in a way with why it happens and, you know, why we get stuck here, some of us. And... Actually, the scared part is what draws me to it the most. <laughs> um, but no, I'm... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of a good time. Um, I mean, it's kind of recent. So, when I joined the team is when I became a little stronger about actually investigating, investigating. I used to go to graveyards a lot to seek it out and get EVPs and all that fun stuff. Right, so you've always had that curiosity about it, but it's just been over the past couple of years that you've really been exposed to the scientific aspect of it and to really getting into the technicalities of it. Right. So, and, and aside from working the equipment and working as a technician with the team and an investigator. There's also a little something extra that you bring to the table during investigations. And you mind sharing a little bit of information about what else it is that you do on investigations? Well, (laughs) I am also a medium. Um, I, I usually get names more than anything, but I'm pretty good at deciphering, you know, what needs to be said uh, by them, and um, I'm, I'm still building myself up to a higher level, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, one of the things, one of the things, D, that I find fascinating that you can do is the spirit writing. Yeah, I enjoy the spirit writing a lot, actually. But I think that's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> could you could you tell me a little bit about how is it is it uh, is it a feeling that you get? Is it do they communicate through you to write down? Uh, could could you elaborate on that a little bit? Um. Yeah. Really. It's 
Like, I let them use me to write what they need to say. And it's almost like, the best way I can explain it, it's almost like someone picking up your arm and writing what they want to say. That's how it feels, anyway. Um, yeah. Well, I found it, you know, the last investigation we went on, and uh, I was with you, and you were doing the spirit writing, and I just I just found that, you know, just, like I said, fascinating, and uh, and I was... I was I was confused. I I don't know a lot about the spirit writing, and that's why I wanted to ask you about it, though. Yeah. Um. I think one of the most fascinating things about the automatic writing that I've ever seen is when she's doing that. I've seen her quite a few times where she's writing, but what she's writing is backwards what what would be backwards and upside down for her so there's no way that she's writing it consciously yeah i'm not capable of doing that right right yeah no kidding <laughs> backwards and upside you know upside down as well that uh, right. that takes some skill if you can do that <laughs> right i've never met anybody who could write like that <laughs> neither right. have i right it's definitely fascinating and and that that's one of those things and and when you put her and pink together and, and a lot of times when you get those two together and then you throw yeah. Christine yeah. in the mix who I'm about to add to the line it, it it's amazing because I've between between my attention deficit disorder tendencies and me being half deaf anyway <laughs> a, a spirit has to work to get my attention and here it is. The three of y'all are able to sense all of these things, and so accurately that yes, I I could I would feel comfortable setting my watch by what y'all come to me with. I mean, like like in cases that I I'd, I'd mentioned a couple of weeks ago, where where you had got the name of a previous tenant that the current tenants didn't know had ever lived there. And some of those type cases, it's it still amazes me. And I, you know, I've had y'all on the team for a couple of years, so it, you know, I'm I'm still mind blown by it. Yeah, yeah, me too. And and you know the 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 most the most amazed I've been with them was in a in in the Margaret case where they were sensing a female and. It was, you know, probably a couple hours into the investigation, and Pink and Dee came up with the name Beth. And, of course, we, we didn't capture anything from Beth that night, but after we after the investigation, uh, we done a little, we, we ran across some more uh, research of that area, and the next door neighbor that had passed away, her name was Beth. Absolutely. And, and, and that was in writing. That was in black and white. And then that the night before, Pink and Dee came up with the name Beth of a female. So it was, it that was really, you you, you know you can't call that coincidence. Right. And and that that still amazes me. Yeah, it was it was spot on. Well, I have to say that. When you get people with, uh, whatever you want to call it, powers, like ours, when we get together and we focus on it, it tends to get stronger. Like, we feed off each other. And in turn, then we can feed the spirits more, and then they can communicate more clearly with us. Of course, by the end of the night, we are both white. We are just drained. Absolutely, that I, I've seen that quite a few times myself. Where, where when y'all first show up, you're ready to go, but by the end of the night, you're just, you know, you're you're slumped ready over. Ready to go. <laughs> just, yeah. you know. And uh, so. And you can tell. And I'm going to try and attempt, Christine was she was having to 
take care of a couple of things so I'm going to try and add her now and we'll um, talk to her for a minute as well sounds good let's see okay let's see how this works let's keep our fingers crossed Christine, can you hear us good? I sure can. All right. Hey, Christine. Well, how are you tonight? I'm doing wonderful. How are y'all? Doing great. So, well, Christine is one of our investigators, and she does a lot of our research on our properties for us, and she helps out with several other things on the team, and... We've uh, been lucky to have her. She's also our... She lives farther away from the rest of us, so... She she drives quite a ways to come to our investigations and meetings. But... So we appreciate her doing that. Um, Absolutely, yes. But... Well, Christine, what... What really sparked your interest in the paranormal? Um... Well, so, a couple of different things, actually. Um, for starters, I didn't realize it up until uh, probably a year, year and a half ago, of uh, my abilities and everything that I have. Um, the first visit to Sloss Furnace is what intrigued me, reading the uh, monuments and stuff that they have throughout Sloss Furnace. And I just, I really thought it would just be a fun idea for starters. But then I come to realize that I could actually help people by doing investigations. And that is what prompted me to learn how to use the equipment, um, learning just all the different areas to paranormal investigations. And so with the, and, and I know that it's sort of new to you, learning the, the abilities that you have. How, how are you finding with the abilities that you have, how, how are you finding that they correlate with what you're learning on the scientific side of the house? Um, on the scientific side of it, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, more or less, my when I say abilities, I'm talking about my psychic abilities. Uh, it's intriguing how certain things come to me, like names will come to me, numbers such as that, and it correlates directly to, um, it could be anything from how many spirits are in the home, it could be a name of one of them, it could be a name of a family member that's passed on, something to that effect. It's just, it's really intriguing to me, and I, I love my abilities. It's, it helps wonders with, when we go to somebody else's home, um, it, they're just, in a way, they're skeptical, and I understand that because I was that way at one time, um, but when names start coming to me and I'm like, well, who is this person? Who is this person? They, it helps them to know that I understand what is going on with them also. So, what would you say from the investigations that you've been on and the experiences that you've had has been the scariest experience or encounter that you've had to date? Um, definitely got to be the case in Trustful. Uh, that one up there really, that's the one that really touched me. It, and when I say touched me, I'm talking there's two different ways. It touched me mentally because I realized that some spirits can be mean, they can be malevolent. Um, in the effect that, that case right there 
I was having chest pains from the heart condition that I had. Um, the chest pains was generated from the malevolent spirit that was present in the household. Um, that one, hands down, had to be the, the scariest one for me. And what what would you say has been one of the more, the most comical experience that you've had? Oh, let's see. <laughs> um, well, that one's kind of hard to say. Um, I it's kind of hard. It kind of kind of hard to be funny in the dark, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I find it hard to be funny in the dark. <laughs> Back to the last case that I was on, the one in Birmingham. Um, it was me and Frank and Courtney and Autumn was down in the basement, and we were doing a echo box session. I was standing on the left hand side. Courtney and Autumn was next to me, and then Frank was on the other side of them. There was one that kept touching me on my leg, and I'm like, "Stop touching my leg." It just, it really, <laughs> I'm laughing about it now. I can laugh about it now. But um, that was definitely one of the ones. I'll, I'll never forget that one. So, yeah, it, it, it seemed like it was it was doing it just to annoy you is what it was trying to do is what it seemed like. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> stuff like that doesn't typically bother me. Um, but that one just kept on, and it was this one spot on my left leg, and I'm like, leave my leg alone. <laughs> right, it's like, hey, that's my leg. Give it back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, you know, it's hard to say, really. It, it, on some of these investigations, what is funnier? The Some of the EVPs we get, some of the... But because some of the EVPs... we. Whoever thinks that some of the ghosts that we encounter don't have a sense of humor, I can prove them <laughs> dead wrong. And, <laughs> right, yeah. And, with some of the responses we have gotten, right. yes, being sarcastic and Right. We we we've got proof that they do have a sense of humor there. Um, yeah, like someone that said, I'm not dead. Right. <laughs> and the um but I, it, it's a tough call, really, between what's funnier, some of the responses we get from the spirits or the responses we get from the investigators when the spirits catch them off guard. <laughs> yeah, the, I bet, the, you know, that's that's the funniest part right there. Is, yeah. Is, is I, startling I, the investigator. <laughs> I have to agree with that one. <laughs> because there, there are some times it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, it what you've seen, what you've been through. There are sometimes you are going to get caught off guard. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and when you do, yeah, it's absolutely. funny. Yes, you will. <laughs> and I, I can't help it. If I see something funny, I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> that, that's yeah, just Don't me. take offense to it. <laughs> we're we're going to laugh at you for a few right. minutes. Right, because if I do something funny and you don't laugh at me, I'm going. it's going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know this group, Frank. We're gonna laugh. Right. So right. <laughs> I won't hear the That's end of it. <laughs> so then, you know that that reminds me of um, se several different occasions that I could talk about, which which I, I'll save those for a little bit later in the show. But I guess I'll go ahead and get Courtney on the show. Get her up to the microphone. I was rolling feet the table. Oh, yeah. So, well, am I connected to? Mm -hmm. So just unmute it whenever. Okay. Let's okay. see. So, Courtney, where are you Courtney. at? Courtney. I'm right here. Okay. So, so and for those of you that don't know, Courtney is my daughter that I'm in the process of training. And she... Um, She's studying quite a few different things. Um, she's one of our apprentice investigators and one of our data technicians. Well, Courtney, how are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? I can't complain. 
I will, but you won't listen. <laughs> 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 so, well, tell, tell everyone what got you interested in the paranormal. I guess, like, you know, growing up and seeing you, you know, participate in groups and investigations and stuff, and, you know, it really just kind of sparked my interest and, you know, just you know a few months ago realized that they're all around us you know and you know just i've been learning a bunch of things being on the team and right so so would you consider yourself more of a believer or more on the skeptical side um at this point i've learned so much stuff being around everybody and going on investigations and stuff like I'm leaning more towards the believer side. But no, that always wasn't the case, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> Sometimes I looked at you know everybody and went, how did that happen? Are you are you serious about that now? <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It, it took quite a few incidents to kind of get you convinced that we weren't all crazy, didn't it? Honestly, yes. <laughs> 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 but I can say I, I can definitely say about Courtney since uh, you know we joined forces you know a year and a half ago she has come a long way and such a huge help on the investigations I mean from set up all the way to review she has done done an awesome job I have to tell you right, she she's been studying quite a bit I've I, I've got to I've got to give her credit she's she's been looking through a lot of the material that I first started studying when when I first got into the field and so is my other daughter that I'm going to bring on the show but um, well Courtney what what would you say was your scariest thing that you've had happen to you during an investigation well I wouldn't say you know I've been Scared. Well, I mean, I have been a little bit nervous on investigations, but I think I can tell you one thing that kind of the, you know, most amazing thing I've probably saw being on investigations was probably at the Birmingham case that y'all were talking about a few minutes ago. It Like when Christine was talking about, you know, me and my friend and you and, you know, being in the basement, like I would see, I know y'all were seeing it too, I'd see flashes of light, like, you know, pop up around the room, and I know it was, it was in the middle of the day, I know it wasn't no flashlight or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Right, what what they call spook lights uh, is what I've often heard them referred to. Um, a lot of times people get those confused with orbs, which are more of a camera anomaly, but, but yes, spook lights are similar to orbs, but they're seen with the naked eye. And, and I do remember that. And, and that's quite a creepy feeling, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> 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 that, and, and I do remember one particular time that we were on an investigation that had a, we'll say, with without... Um, giving out any type of identifying information. We'll say that they had a basement that resembled the one off the movie The Conjuring very, very closely. And I'm sure you know exactly where I'm talking about. Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and you remember it being an empty basement and it sounded so, there was so much noise coming from down there that you thought someone had broken in. Yes, I did. <laughs> And that was also, I remember you sitting next to me on the couch. And I remember Pink and Dee sitting on another couch in the living room as we were doing an EVP session. And, and what was it that happened um, shortly after, or shortly during that? Well, I just felt like a hand had just kind of hit the couch. Like, that. I could... I, at the, out of the corner of my eye, I saw the couch like go down a little bit. I could have swore, you know, and I and I felt the vibration of it too. So, and I jumped, and <laughs> y'all were probably all like, 
<laughs> What's wrong with this girl? Passing <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. out on me. <laughs> right. And, and, and I remember that's the closest I think you've set to me since you were about six years old. <laughs> 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 but but it is great, you know, seeing that, you know, see, seeing your daughters interested in the same thing that you're doing. I, I'm proud of both of them. And so Frank, they're they're not just interested; they're following right in your footsteps. I mean, step for step. I mean, they're just gonna be they're gonna be just like you in five years. Well, I, I hope not exactly like me. I, I hope they right. Avoid we'll a few leave out of, some of the yeah. We'll right, we'll leave right. out a few Let's of the little. The <laughs> right, 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 right. I hope I hope there's a few of the terms that they take a little bit different roads on, but <laughs> <laughs> stay in school, kids. <laughs> and um, let me get my younger child to the microphone Brittany or you in there anywhere <laughs> I don't that's, hear her that, that's... thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, she hasn't gone to sleep on us has she <laughs> Well I, well, I guess while we're waiting there, Frank, I'll throw out a, a funny story that happened to me on an investigation. All right, that sounds good. Okay, she, all right, yeah, she's in. I was just seeing if she was on yet, but, uh, well, it happened also at the uh, demonic case we done. The scariest and the funniest thing happened that same night. And uh, it was, uh, well, we had already almost finished up the investigation. It was about 30 minutes before we had left. And uh, we were wrapping, we were kind of wrapping things up. And, you know, that was a pretty active night. I mean, I've seen some things there that I've never seen on investigations before. So my nerves and, you know, my, my guard was up. <laughs> well, I walked into the back bedroom. And if y'all remember directly to the right as you walked in the door there was a full length mirror right there mm -hmm. well when I walked in that room and caught a glimpse of me staring at me I nearly took out <laughs> I mean it <laughs> so it, you know <laughs> it scared me like I haven't been scared before I mean for some reason you know, just about you know three hours earlier me and you both saw that full bodied apparition standing in the window well, that was just way too close for comfort for me right there, looking at my own <laughs> reflection in the mirror. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you were just too tired to handle that. <laughs> exactly, yes. So, <laughs> and and when when you mentioned the full-bodied apparition that we've seen, that, this wasn't something that was kind of opaque that we thought, we didn't realize we were looking at a spirit. It, this was so dense and so clear exactly we literally everyone else on the team was talking to the client it, the client lived there with her mother and we we were getting everything unloaded everyone else was talking to the client and me and donald are getting the last of the equipment out and we look up and we see this thing in in the window and it is so clear so dense that we thought it was the client's mother and when yes. we walked around we we told the client well we've seen your mother upstairs and she's like my mother's not home i'm the only one here and, and, I and think, that room is locked yeah the room was <laughs> locked too and that was when it really hit you what it what it yes, was <laughs> i know and, and y'all been investigating with me for a long time and y'all know and, and y'all can back me up on this that nothing ever happens to me Nothing ever happens to me, but that night, that, I mean, I think that thing was just messing with me because I had so many things happen to me in that one night that it was just, it had me, it had me up in arms. Now, I was ready to fight or flight, one of the two, because <laughs> it, it was pretty active that night. It, it definitely was. It, everyone on the team got touched, 
God. Yes. Had something saw, happen. Yes, yeah, saw shadow figures going across the hallway. It was just, it was really a really active night. Yes, right. it was. <laughs> that, that was where I... Comfort for me, that's where I had my chest pains at that night. That, mm-mm. Nope. That, yes. <laughs> that was that was where I swore that I heard D call my name in the living room and everyone was in the kitchen. I was in the living room by myself. <laughs> yeah. So did so did Brittany find the microphone? <clears throat> or, or is she still hiding? <laughs> <laughs> she's shy right I, i'll tell you what we'll we'll give her a free pass since she's she she is pretty shy so i'll <laughs> I, I, i'll give her a free pass this time but we, well, i tell you Brit, Brittany is another great hand to have along on the investigations just so the the fans and everyone listening will know Brittany is great on the investigations with us right her her and courtney they they typically work together they they run our command center quite a few times. They help us with our data review, and they 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 both do quite a bit both on the investigations and off with helping us go through evidence, helping us do research. It's you know I, I'm a proud father to say the least. Yeah, you should be. You definitely should be. And you know, Daddy, like when you uh. When you said it, talk about me and Brittany running the command center, like, it, you know, it's crazy, like, you know, hearing something that y'all caught while y'all are still investigating, and it's like, oh, my God, look, 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 you know, it, it's pretty, you know, creepy. Intense, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, yeah. It is, and, and I do drag them away from the command center a little bit so that I can get them some hands-on training with running the equipment and setting it up and teaching them some techniques as well so that way they've kind of learned they're learning the best of both worlds so anyway for everyone listening we said we were we've got a new member to the Casper team and I haven't said who it is yet and I've kind of kept it a um, a big um, secret so I, I guess since it's getting close to time to end the show, I'd better go ahead and let our newest investigator come to the microphone so that they can make their debut. So Andy, uh, come on down. The price is right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have to. <laughs> so Andy is our newest member and welcome to the team and welcome to the show. Oh well they, can you hear me? You loud and clear. Oh okay, sorry. I'm I'm the technically challenged one of the bunch, so uh you just have to overlook me, but uh, <laughs> um so I guess to start out, uh I'll just answer, you know, the uh what got me interested in the paranormal and um I'm not sure how old I was. I think I was like maybe third or fourth grade. I was pretty young and I'd seen something about the Bermuda Triangle and it just fascinated me. And I remember going to the library and checking out every book I could find on the Bermuda Triangle because I wanted to know, you know, what happened. You know, in my mind, it was like planes and people and boats can't just disappear. So that kind of sparked my interest. And um, my dad was in the army, so we moved around a lot. And we were in a lot of different interesting places. And uh, I know one time we lived in Georgia in this old house. They called it the Clark House. It had belonged to two sisters. And uh, neither one had married. And one of them had passed away of natural causes in the house of an old, of old age. It still had the, um, all of the same furniture and everything in the house. It was just it was just wonderful, all these antiques and things. And I remember one time my grandmother and a cousin had come to visit us and we were laying in the bed one night and we heard footsteps and uh, I think I was maybe seven, eight years old. So I was fearless. I thought I'm going to go check this out. And I'm thinking I'm going to run into my parents, you know, walking down the hall or something. And I go down there and nobody's there. So my fearlessness kind of left me and I turned tail and ran 
jumped in the bed and put the covers over my head and, and that <laughs> <laughs> the three of us would spend all night awake and all day sleeping and my parents were like what is wrong with you and um but we also found a lot of old diaries and pictures and it just fascinated me and as I've gone through my life living in various places I would always have feelings mm-hmm. and uh, in fact one of my best friends used he still jokes with me and calls it my spidey sense right. I, I would just like, <laughs> I would see somebody and I'd be like, I just don't trust them, if, even if I didn't know them. And, or I'd find somebody and I'd be like, okay, I think they're a good person. And any time I've gone against my gut feeling, I have regretted it. So I started learning to trust my gut and I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this. But I kind of pushed it back because I really didn't know anybody to talk to about it. And uh, kind of like what Pink said earlier, you know, I didn't want to tell my parents because then they're going to be like, oh, you're just, it's in your head, you know, whatever. Um, so I just really didn't explore it too much, but as I became an adult, I've looked around for people that were serious about investigating. I've found several people, of course, that are like, oh yeah, yeah, I want to go out to a graveyard on Halloween. And I'm thinking that's all fine and good, but I want somebody that's actually serious about trying to find out what's going on. So I guess I started out as a skeptic, but I've become a believer through my own, um, just my own personal experiences. And within the last several months, um, just in doing some research and finding other people and talking to people, the term empath came up. And I was like, okay. And so I started Googling and I was like, all I could do is just sit there and shake my head and be like, oh my God, that sounds like me. Oh my God, that sounds like me. Oh my God, that sounds like me. (laughs) And uh, so after I've met this group, um, I actually, I started to start listening to my intuition more and, and trusting it. And it's been nice because, like, with Frank, there's been several times I'll say, okay, I've got this feeling about blah, 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 blah. Am I right or wrong? And he'll he'll validate it. And so each time I get validation on a feeling that I pick up, it just makes me feel like, okay, this I'm not crazy after all. So, And it's not just all in my head. Um, I guess, too, kind of like D, I got drugged to different doctors because I suffered from a lot of headaches as a kid and um, a lot of anxiety problems and stuff like that. And now I think that it was more I picked up on other people. So, um, And it wasn't necessarily always me. But, uh, again, being a kid, I didn't know. And so I just kind of went with whatever my parents said. Oh, okay, well, we're going to take you to the doctor. So, right. And they're going to fix you. <laughs> and it never <laughs> fixed me. So, um so I've accepted my strangeness. Um, I like it. If somebody calls me weird, I consider it a compliment. So um, I'm so <laughs> glad to be a part of the team. Everybody has welcomed me with open arms. Haven't been on an investigation yet, but um, I'm looking forward to it very much. And uh, I just, it's a great team. Everybody I've met has been wonderful. And I mean, I felt at ease the first time I met everybody. So it's just been great. And I appreciate it. Well, we're definitely glad to have you aboard. And one thing I can definitely give Andy credit for, she has been studying and learning as much as she can. I, I've sent her some material, and she has really just soaked it up like a sponge. I've, um, you know, definitely proud of her for all of the hard work she's been putting into learning as much as she can, as fast as she can, and she's she's going to be a great asset to the team. So. So it's yes, most awesome. definitely she will, and uh, as long as she keeps making those chocolate pies, she can stay on the team as long as she wants. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, you missed it, I tell you. It was, it was excellent. I think I'm becoming the group cook here. She's <laughs> fooling everybody, you know. <laughs> Right. She she made some chocolate pie for one of our meetings and it it turned out awesome. It yes, it did. And uh and we're we're definitely glad to have you on, Andy. And uh we're 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 excited about having you on and, and, and we're looking forward to having an investigation with you as well. And it's um and and Andy, I, I think your mic has stopped working on you there. Okay, can you hear me now? There yeah. you go. <laughs> like that yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I can hear. <laughs> like I said, I'm the technically challenged one in the bunch, so I'm just here for the food. So <laughs> well, well, I'm that, the catering uh, service. <laughs> right. Well, that's okay. She's just technically challenged. The rest of us are just challenged in general. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well. And, um, now, do you want me to be nice or do you want me to be me? I, I can't do both. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's it been an awesomely fun show. I, I've really enjoyed having the team on here, but it unfortunately it looks like we're just about out of time. So Aww. we're going to have to call Yes, I know. It's, we could sit here and talk another two hours probably. Right. Oh, thanks, good. <laughs> So we we could definitely tell some stories. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. We'll have to have a we'll have to have a Casper team part two. Right. I, I definitely see us having to do that. And by the way, Christine has a birthday coming up here very soon. Um, yeah, right. she does. <laughs> right. So um, if anyone goes to the Casper page at facebook.com/casper.paranormal. Y'all be sure and wish her a happy birthday just to kind of turn her face red a little bit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. And, and if you want to learn more about the team, you can check us out at, of course, casperparanormal.com. But anyway, that's all the time we've got for tonight, and it's been a pleasure, and we thank everybody for tuning in. So everybody say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So we look forward to everyone tuning in and thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Paranormal Teas and Ponderings with the Casper Paranormal Team. Brought to you by the Paranormal King Radio Network. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll tune in again next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Please be safe as you're out there, especially if you're investigating the paranormal. Take care, have a good night, and happy holidays. Thank you again from the Casper Paranormal Team.